Hello, this video includes information on molar mass, percent composition, and empirical and molecular formulas. We've talked about molar masses already. That tells us how many grams there are per mole um, for a particular compound, okay? So if we wanted to look at um, C2H6O and we wanted to figure out its molar mass, it contains carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. That's the first thing we figure out. Then, how many carbons? Two. How many hydrogens? Six. How many oxygens? One. Then we use the periodic table, which tells us how many grams there are per mole for each of the elements. So carbon is 12.01 grams per mole. Hydrogen is one, well, I would even write this as 1.01, um, but it says 1.008 grams per mole. Oxygen is 16.00 grams per mole. So we would just multiply, since we've got two carbons, we'd multiply by two, 12 or 24.02. We've got six hydrogen, so we'll just multiply. So 6.048, one um, oxygen, so we've got 16.00. And then when we add this up, this gives us our molar mass, okay? Now this eight is just an extra significant digit. We don't have to write it there. So 46.06 grams per mole for this particular compound. And again, when we did our mole conversions, we've already gone through how to do that. So now we're gonna use that in a different way. We're gonna calculate what's called a percent composition. Okay, and, and when we calculate percentages, it's like any other thing. Like if we wanted to um, figure out the percent of, I don't know, yellow M&Ms in a bag of M&Ms, we would have to know how many yellow M&Ms there are and how many total there are. And then we would just take the yellow divided by the total times 100. We would do the same kind of thing here, but we'd be doing it with masses. So let's say we talk about the um, molecule ammonia, NH3. Well, the first thing we're gonna do <clears throat> is figure out what the molar mass for ammonia is. So it contains, um, oh, actually we can just do this in our head. So we've got 14.01 um, times one plus 13 times 1.01, that's where this 17.04 comes from. I think I actually showed it. I didn't. Okay. Um, so again, you know, you can do this really in your head now. So one times 14.01 plus three times 1.01. So that's where this comes from. How many grams there are per mole. So now let's look at nitrogen. Well, nitrogen um, is 14.01. We'd multiply it by one. So we've got 14.01. Hydrogen is 1.01. We'd multiply it by three, so it's 3.03. .03. So now we wanna figure out the percents. So for nitrogen, it's the part, so that's just the nitrogen, divided by the whole times 100. So nitrogen is 82.2% by mass in ammonia. And if we wanted to figure out the percent composition of hydrogen in ammonia, here's our part. That's the mass just due to the nitrogen. Here's our whole. So we take the nitrogen over the whole times 100, and that would tell us that hydrogen is 17.78% by mass in this compound. And a way that you can check your answer is since ammonia only contains nitrogen and hydrogen, the sum would be 100. Okay, it has to be. There isn't anything else in the compound. So the first thing we would do is use our periodic table to find out what the molar mass is. And then we just take the part for each of the compounds and divide it by the whole and multiply it by 100. So let's look at aspirin. Okay, aspirin has the formula C9H8O4. So the first thing you have to do is figure out what the total molar mass is 
So look up carbon times nine plus hydrogen times eight plus oxygen times four and add it up. That'll give you your molar mass. And then take just the carbon part and divide it by the total. And then just the hydrogen part and divide it by the total. And then just the oxygen part and divide it by the total. Okay, and let's see what you get for the percent composition of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in our aspirin molecule. The total, I'm gonna tell you right now, the total is 180.17, okay? So the carbon is 108.09, the hydrogen is 8.08, .08, the oxygen is 64.00. This is the total, figure out what the percent is. Okay, so carbon's gonna be 108.09 divided by the total, times 100. So carbon is 60% of the total mass of an aspirin molecule. Okay, do the same thing for hydrogen and then do the same thing for oxygen. Okay, so for oxygen, I'm taking 8.08 .08 divided by the total times 100. So hydrogen is 4.48%, excellent. Okay, and let's do the same thing for oxygen. What's the percent by mass of oxygen in our compound? Now, because we have four digits here, we should really have four digits here. And because we've got three digits here, we should really have three digits here, um, just significant digit wise. We know how to calculate the percent composition by mass of a compound. Okay, we just did that. If we know the percent composition of a compound, we can determine what's called its empirical formula. Okay, so what is an empirical formula? An empirical formula is the simplest whole number mole ratio of atoms in a compound. So as an example, okay, CH2O, is an example of an empirical formula. It has one carbon, two hydrogens, and one oxygen. One to two to one, that can't be simplified anymore. It's the simplest whole number ratio of carbon to hydrogen to oxygen in that compound. Now, we also have what are called molecular formulas. And molecular formulas are the actual formulas for the compound how it actually appears in nature. And sometimes the empirical formula and the molecular formula are the same, okay? But sometimes the molecular formula is some multiple of the empirical formula. So as an example, C6H12O6, okay? That's the molecular formula for glucose. It's not an empirical formula because 6, 12, and 6 could be simplified. Okay, the empirical formula for glucose would be CH2O. If we simplify six to 12 to six, this would be the empirical formula for glucose. Now, formaldehyde is CH2O. This is how the compound actually is found. It's actually in the simplest ratio, so not only is this the molecular formula for formaldehyde, but it's also its empirical formula. So what can we do with that? How can we calculate the empirical formula for a compound? The way we do it is we take the mass of the first atom, we divide it by its molar mass to figure out how many moles we have. We take the mass of the second atom and we divide it by its molar mass and that gives us the moles of the second atom. These aren't gonna be whole numbers. 
So the next step would be to divide by the smallest number of moles between these two. And that will give us a whole ratio, which then allows us to figure out our empirical formula. That's kind of a flow chart for what we do. Here's an example. Okay, if we were to look at a compound and it contained iron and oxygen, and we wanted to find out what the empirical formula for the compound is. Well, we could take that compound and break it up chemically. And if we found that the compound contained 34.97 grams of iron and 15.03 grams of oxygen, we could figure out its empirical formula. The first thing we do is divide by the molar mass to figure out the moles divide by the molar mass to figure out the moles, okay? This first step here. But these aren't whole numbers. The next step would be to divide by the smallest number, okay? The iron is the smallest number. So we're gonna divide both of these numbers by 0.626. That gives us a 1.50 for oxygen and a one for iron. Well, these still aren't whole numbers. But if we were to multiply these numbers by two, we get a three to two ratio. These are whole numbers. The three tells us how many oxygens we have. And the two tells us how many irons we have. So based on this information about the compound, we can figure out that its empirical formula, its simplest whole number ratio is Fe2O3.